Welcome back to Primary Target, episode 17. I'm your host, Who the Fuck, joined always by my co-host, Vargren, and our very special guest and longtime friend today, Nate Marston. Nate, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, a few things we're going to cover today. Uh, mostly just talking to Nate uh, about his backstory in EVE and some of the stories he might have. We're also going to touch a little bit on some of the recent changes uh, that have occurred in EVE Online. Uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, Nate, tell us a bit about yourself in EVE. Like, where did you start? Where did you go? Where are you now? Uh, so I've been uh, quite a long time player. I started in 2013, uh, did the usual new to EVE, haven't seen it in, I think it was a PC gamer article. Uh, then decided, yeah, I'll go make money the usual way, high sec mining and missioning. That was pretty boring. Um, I ended up branching out into exploration and I got ganked. Uh, by a rocket bomber and that sort of started my uh interest in cloaky shenanigans a rocket uh, bomber yep uh oh, so it's, you get a you get a bomber uh, oh, i know i i mean it's <laughs> on it yeah yeah so a rocket bomber killed i think it was a heron i was in um, oh, fair enough and yeah i then thought hmm if he can do it so can i and started ganking in low sec for the forge region so around masoya and akora uh, ended up ganking or trying to gank and failed quite badly. And Astero owned by, I think it was Jane Fillion, uh, who ran Spectre Fleet, got uh, invited to their channels and thought, mm, this is a good way of playing. Like, it's not purple, shoot it. Um, so it was a case of you fleet it up and then you shot anything that wasn't in your fleet. That then led into Bomber's Bar. Um, and I have a longish history with Bomber's Bar, but I'm not a notable FC for them. I have FC'd for them. Um, but I spent a lot of time learning from Templeman N, um, who's the FC in the This Is Eve trailer where all the bombers are destroying the fleets. And yeah. Oh, that's such, that's a, such a good moment in that everything. trailer. Yeah, so the one of the bombers in there is me. Like, I can't tell you what I was in, but yeah. I it think... was one of those moments where it was like you were in that fleet and it was just a good feeling and he just felt was always hyped about everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Nova and uh, Nova Valentis is uh, yeah Bomber's Bar. He was as well. he was telling us that Templeman is the person who founded Bomber's Bar. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So I joined there. I th want to say I started flying with Bomber's Bar in 2014 before I went on a, out of area. Um, and yeah, had a lot of fun on Bomber's Bar fleets. Killed many many supers. Many many walks missed out on a titan kill because i was in a other props fleet at the time oh i know it was a blue titan so i couldn't really kill it oh. yeah yeah um i then moved into null with phoebe freeport republic uh about two weeks after the phoebe patch um and we started out in ethereum reach and then moved across to scolding pass which is probably where they're best known um for the four tax seat uh undock which was a big free port it was a free port station anyone could come anyone could dock anyone could use the market so it'd be a case of a fleet would come around we'd fight them on the undock everyone would dock up we'd replen ships uh get new ships refill ammo we'd then undock warp off the undock a little bit and then start fighting again uh followed that corp for quite a while um i think it was six years seven years i think total oh wow okay uh let me work it out Um, and yeah, so I've moved around uh, into Aquarius with the original Aquarius Fight Club where Horde and Brave were all in Aquarius. Um, this is pre-Imperium in Delve. Um, moved then into Phoenix Federation. Uh, had a lot of fun there. Did quite a lot of blocks in there as well, using some of the blocks groups there and some solo stuff. Then, yeah, DQC moved into Brave, carried on there. Um, some shenanigans there which we'll probably talk about later oh yes uh, and yeah uh instant blacklist from all test services because of that <laughs> we'll we'll go but we'll go more into what exactly happened there in a little while <laughs> yeah uh dqc then decided let's go wormhole which is sort of where i think vargrin and who sort of got their like uh oh, i don't know how to describe it. their hook into wormholes probably the best way of describing it yeah pretty much um 
yeah followed dqc for a while the wormhole didn't work out um so i then moved across to nc following a friend of mine and since then i've moved into capf in pandemic horde where cloaky shenanigans are everywhere and yeah i've heard pretty much a very quickish rundown of uh, my eve career i've heard good things about capf how do you like it uh it's good fun um it is meme central like That's, if you yeah. can't meme or understand memes you will you will like burn out there's the like, constant <laughs> memeing like you close so, discord for two minutes you come back there's 120 new messages all of them in emotes and everything so is it it's more cool. of a meme corp that plays eve or is it more of an eve corp that, that does memes uh i'd say it's a bit of both uh it's an eve corp that does quite a lot of high-end like tactics wise stuff um that are just full meme lords like they're all great guys and girls and yeah they're just full-on memory nice um and yeah it's just a lot of good fun so let's go back to brave let's mm -hmm. uh let's talk about what everyone loves to hear is is about some good dibble incidents what the oh, what yeah. kind of shenanigans did you get into in brave like i i know you as being like the premier person to talk to if I have a question about anything cloaky or blops related. And of yeah, course, um, me and Vargon are going to know some of these stories, but like, t tell us, go ahead. Uh, so I decided let's set up or assist the blops group um, is test my well, legacy as a whole, um, the, block, the combined block, blops groups for test brave and a few other groups um, decided uh, let's go cloaky camp frat. So we'd set up, um, covered 90% of Deterid, most of Wicked Creek, and quite a fair bit of Scolding Pass was all covered with Cloaky Campers, just to, this is pre their agreement with Test. Um, yeah, this is, um, this is when we, Test and yeah. Frat were fighting each other, like, what was it? Yeah, actually, year, I want to say like a year ago, more. year, year no, and a half ago, something like that. Was it? A couple of years, maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, work out when. Time flies, doesn't it? must have been like a year sort of mid 2018 okay all right all right yes yeah. good, good couple of years ago yeah um so we'd set up cloaky campers everywhere i had uh, a number of spare accounts and this was just after sp farming got introduced or we do a skill injector skill extractor so i yeah. had a number of accounts that were self-sustaining um through skill injection and extraction and i was go around have them and just leave them running every day because where i work uh, i've got free accommodation and free electric so i just had my computer on 24 7 pretty much uh, with about four or five cloaky campers set up uh we initially well, i caught one carrier uh that was fitted out like it should have been a hell full faction everything um and once we killed that we shut down that constellation there was no writing in that constellation for a, close to a month um, after the nip between test and frat, um, brave were not told anything. Uh, I asked the brave diplos multiple times, who can I, who can't I cloaky camp? And I was told, read the Reddit thread. The Reddit thread named certain groups as frat renters. Um, this one group Theron Alliance, they were not listed, uh, as a frat renter. And they even had in their, uh, Alliance bio, which of course is 100% yeah. truthful, uh, that they were an independent soft holding alliance. So I thought, Ooh, here we go, uh, set up some cloaky campers. Um, and after about a month started getting, uh, email saying, you can't be here. You're not allowed to test says you can't do this. Uh, so of course I ignored them being the good person I am and, uh, started trying to extort them. Um, and just had in the bio <laughs> for all the tunes, one bill and I leave you for a week which I thought was reasonable. Uh, never got paid, so of course I didn't leave. Uh, yeah. Um, I was then in conversation... I got, I got to you. ask, I got to stop you there real quick, Nate. Has that ever worked? Has anyone ever actually no, paid I've, you? I've, never done that, <laughs> no. I've heard of other people getting paid, but I'm pretty sure they get paid and they just stay anyway. Yeah, so it's yeah, just yeah, one yeah, of those really. where it's like, if you don't try, like you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> yeah. All right. I thought, well, I may as well. It's like, it's a bit of added bonus. Um, right. So yeah, the first carrier we got, 
uh, was a frag carrier. This was a Deterid, and that was a three bill rain carrier that was full faction mids, full faction lows, and tech two everything, like tech two fight support units and everything. So it Lovely. was pretty much a hell fitting on a Nidhogger. That then started the uh, Let's Go Hunt Carriers. Theron Alliance uh, were not the smartest of pilots, I'll put it diplomatically. Oh, I can confirm um, that. They were they were pretty horrible at PvP. Yeah, uh, we kind of, as a corp, kind of visited them quite a lot for corp <clears> and <throat> they always fed amazingly. <clears throat> farmed. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> visited. <laughs> yeah, farmed. Um, and yeah, we went around and I had my cloaky camper and system. And this was when I was getting conversations from Diplo saying, you, you shouldn't be here. But I kept asking for the nip because um, they would never tell me why I shouldn't be there. So I kept asking for the nip text and they said, no, nope, you can't see it. Um, so I kept going and then I pinged a blobs form up because uh, I found a carrier. Um, I locked the cloaky camper off, locked it back on again um, to make it look as if I'd left system um, and then walked to the carrier, lit the Sino and uh, him came close to 40 bombers, I think. It was a very convenient uh, time, so, uh, if 20, I remember. Yeah, it was uh, 28 uh, bombers, so it was pretty much, I pinged the group, I said form up, um, as soon as everything had formed on the blops, locked the uh, Sino in, walked to the carrier because I'd pre-bookmark the site and uh yeah it was something Minus like we had all just returned from a strat op too right like we, there was a bunch of us in one location where your your yeah, blobs there's lots to be. of people in uh in curse uh otak no what was the system oh, next to oh, yeah oh shit um so we they just come back through they docked in the keep star next door and we're about to leave i then pinged bombers from that system so loads yeah. of people shipped in the bombers, and then I told them, all right, gate next door, get on the blocks, and let's go. And I think it was a case of ping, from ping to kill, it was about 10 minutes. Yeah, I didn't even feel like that long. Yeah. Setting up on the, yeah, it was setting up on the blocks. I think the longest bit was just, well, killing the wreck at the end of it, I think, to deny them loot. And uh, yeah, I then pinged up, not a nip violation, and then the carrier killed to the blocks group. And then five minutes later, I'm booted from the blocks group. Yeah. Um, and told, yeah, pending investigation, you're no longer part of the Blobs group. This is after I get told we've just had 30 people apply to the Blobs group. So I think <laughs> right. I single-handedly got 30, I got 30 people to join a near-dead SIG. Um, and, yeah. and then got booted yeah, from booted it. For it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it was good fun. politics, man. I mean, as far as Blobs... Uh, I then had a fleets are concerned that's that's highly successful 10 minutes into the yeah, fleet like you've 90, got like 90 percent of the time <laughs> like i'd say 99 percent of the time your blocks fleets are 90 percent boredom 10 percent let's kill something yeah. i got it the other way around i had 90 exactly. percent killing 10 percent like cloak up wait for the timers let's get you out of there uh i then yeah i think i bridged my blocks into system in a safe and then bridged everyone out and they just yeah. didn't catch anyone yeah, can confirm. We didn't even have to walk back. It was like the easiest carrier kill fleet I've ever been on. It was great. Yeah, I then got a uh, message from Dran Arcana where he calls me some not so pleasant things. Um, Dran is uh, and, yeah, Tess said, head diplo, by Tess's the way. Head diplo. Yeah. Um, and he's, yeah, kind of an arse in it. And he threatened <laughs> or tries to get me kicked out of Brave for that. Um, luckily, our corp CEO saw sense and just laughed at him and told him no. Yeah. Um, I presented my side of the argument, um, and he said, "Yeah, I don't care. Uh, you would have been told the contents of the nip had you asked for it." I told him I had and hadn't been told, and he just then went, "Well, you should have known." So in the end, I was quite disillusioned with like legacy as a whole, and especially test. So I yeah. sort of stopped going on everything test related and yeah until well once this war's over i'm sure test is next as everyone is saying so yeah yeah, might, yeah we'll see a bit of fun. accident well horde and test aren't blue to each other as far as i'm aware i think i've set them personal standings blue um because lots of groups haven't um set standings uh, i mean i would i would how easy it is to get a character in 
I was going to say, yeah, I'll jump in real quickly and say that it's very rare for anyone to blue hoard just because of the, how the, easy. The yeah, they don't ESI check when recruits join. So anyone, any spy can get in there. So they are a very difficult organization to set blue because you just, you yeah. just don't know. And, uh, so yeah, so yeah. so you've you've caused you've caused a, a a diplomatic incident, which frankly isn't even close to being a major one. But you know you you're sick of the the fucking politics bullshit and all of the rest of it. So then what? Uh, I kind of just had one of those right. I'm gonna I'm like am I angry at a point because of what's happened? Um, so I'm just gonna go and stop playing for a bit and like do other things. So I think I stopped or paused for about a month month or two um and then started doing stuff on my own again um but one of the things that also happened in the blops group uh was their blops like the heads of the brave blops group decided let's go blops in probably for a bit uh we then get told oh i found a procurer it's on a moon Let let's go kill it except the guy didn't have towers on his overview didn't have oh. pos guns on his overview, didn't have pos modules <laughs> on his overview. So I said, right, let's go with bombers. Uh, Cause we've, we were trialing uh, Blops Loki doctrine at the time and we only had one Logi Loki. So I said, right, I'm just gonna go switch to a bomber and was told, no, no, don't worry. It's just a lone procurer, it won't hurt you. Yeah, it did. Um, turns out that we got dropped on a bait Death Star, on a bait procurer on a Death Star pos. Yeah. yeah was were, were there any survivors or uh well i got tackled uh because i was the only loki in there and then everyone else oh, yeah. decided yeah let's warp off so <laughs> lo and behold yeah that was sort of like the start of the downward like feeling uh like wasn't so happy with the blobs group at that point but i did get srp for it uh i think it just about covered it um but yeah so like that was good fun. There were several times where we blops out of our first wormhole as Dexy after we left Brave. Yeah. How did you how did you feel about that? About not having to worry about nips, not having to worry about uh, who you're blue to and whatnot, as opposed to oh, like having awesome. more of a setup blops group, but having a bunch of blues and, and you know diplomatic arrangements. Yeah, so that was the main uh, like the, the bonuses for that is you can appear in a random nullsec system. And if you're lucky, you have a targeting system. So you don't even need to like get the blobs through the wormhole. Right. Um, otherwise, it's a case of you just get some good hunters. And we had uh, one or two guys that were amazing at reading the in-game map. Deg being one of them. Yeah. Yes. And he could read the in-game map and just know where. Like you could just send Deg in a random direction, and he would find content. So we would get him to hunt for us occasionally. Um, or we get other people just, that wanted to try hunting. Just, just, just to give full credit to uh, Dagarian Soth. Yes, Dagarian uh, Soth. The, yes, he was a, a, a living legend. I guess that's, he's, that's I guess he's all right. He's all right. He's okay. Let's, <laughs> let's calm down here, okay? He's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was good. It was similar to how Bombers Bar had their wormhole setup. They had an actual null sec static. Uh, in their wormhole, so uh, I think they called it 745, which was the last three numbers in the J code for the wormhole. Oh, right, um, yeah. And they and another group uh, used to operate out of there. Um, so you'd get bombers bar fleets ping from that wormhole. Uh, you'd form up in the nearest uh, trade hub and then get told, right, go to this system. This is your wormhole entrance. You'd follow the chain through, dock in the Citadel and system. Um, and then it would be a case that they would rage roll uh, to the got a good null sec, and then they'd send the hunters out, send the blocks to the wormhole, have the fleet on the wormhole ready to go, jump through, approach the wormhole, take the bridge, and kill something. Um, Delve was a popular target because, yeah, why not? Um, but most major blocks, their home regions or writing regions were often targeted. Um, so, impasse was quite a popular one. Yeah, we may we have gone on a few pass. fleets on a neutral character. Um, then yeah, so that that was always good fun. Um, I think not having all the blues just means you've got a target rich environment. Um, but at the same time, if you've got blues and you're dropping in a region and you know certain groups have heavier stuff in range of that, 
you can always call on them to give you a hand if you catch something bigger than what you can take on. Yeah, yeah. escalation can be difficult, like dealing yeah, with especially uh, at a court response level. fleets. Unless you've got people logged off in supers in like NPC or in various in like various regions, then it's kind of hard to self-escalate. Especially yeah. if you're going from a wormhole that isn't a null static. It's I think we were in a C two, C five static. Yeah. Um, so we were having to go through either the C two or the C five to then get to the null to potential null static in there or just a wandering null to then go out further. So it was always a risk because it wasn't in your home system but at the same time i did the work holder thing and always had probes fitted so i i knew if i got rolled out at least i could probe my way with a redeemer because yeah things happened luckily i never got rolled out uh which was always good so i've i've popped out null several times and thought to myself there's no way i can kill the super carrier and he's not scared of me and he has no reason to be. But man, if I had a chain for Bombers Bar right now, this would be fantastic. Like, <laughs> Or to Thera, because Volta will always up for stuff. Yeah. So, like, one tell me... Those... Go ahead. I see one of the guys that I used to fly with who was part of Centipede Caliphate, um, and who was in PFR, um, ended up in Volta for a while. So I always knew that if I caught something and he was online, I could always ping him and get Volta to assist. Unfortunately, mm. we never got anything that needed a Volta assist on it, which was a bit unfortunate because that would have been quite fun to see just the Volta Lokis and the Volta Legions just pouring out of a wormhole and blobbing something and just absolutely massacring it. So like your time in Bomber's Bar has been spent as both like a... Uh like a little bit of time as an FC from my understanding. And yeah. also as like, uh, I'm imagining like a like line a sort of member. Yeah. Yeah. Support. Sort of lines. I did sort of line, like generic line member where I just pitch up in a bomber and just shoot what I was told to shoot. Then other times I'd be the bridger. So I'd have, uh, I normally would dual or triple box at that point. So I'd have like a bridger, a hunter, and then a bomber, or I would sometimes go bomber, bridger, and then fuel truck. Um, so like so like, yeah it was it's quite you had to pay attention quite a bit for that um, do you because you use your boxing. do you use your cloaky camping system now for lots of bombers bar stuff or what do you mainly use it for like, uh, so i've not stuff? done anything for bombers bar for i want to say close to a year now i think um oh. when i think it was about a year ago they started there i think they're called habakkuk fleets which was you set up a bridger in range of low sec and then you just run like fuck wall low sec yeah. um you'd have uh like your conventional uh cyber hunters so like a cloaky t3c or a cloaky bomber or something um but this was just after the sino changes with industrial sinos and you can bridge blocks bridge to an industrial sino so what we would do is we would get like a uh, tanked Nereus or Sigil or something with Sino and Tackle mids, um, and then we would just have that roam around like AFK or autopilot around. And just sorry, have hang a on. Pilot just can't hear you over the spaceship in the background, Nate. Hang on. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, typhoon <laughs> taking off in the background. Uh, luckily, there's no seagulls anymore. Sorry, that's that not not the Mimitar battleship. I just want to point out. That's uh, a yeah, plane. the Eurofighter Typhoon. Yeah, that's a plane he's talking about. Uh, yeah, because active airbase uh, or active runway about four or five hundred meters from where I am right now. Okay. So, yeah, if you if you do hear it, uh, I've got quite good noise cancelling on, so uh, I don't often hear the background. I bet you get plenty of sleep, buddy. Oh yeah, so much. <laughs> Especially when they're night flying. Oh my god. So oh, sorry, go go back. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh... Yeah. So the Habakkuk fleets that Bombers Bar were doing, I FC one. Um, as just to try and get back into FC in. Um, but that was at a point where I had quite a lot going on and I was moving uh, locations uh, for work, so it didn't tie in too well. But it was where you'd have a bridge set up either in uh, low sec on a guaranteed free port structure, ideally one that we'd own um, or we knew the owner of them and we knew that they would keep it. Uh, free port, or you would set off out of a free port structure in high sec in bridge range or low sec. You'd then have your like uh, sonotunes going around 
um, we'd often use the industrial sign because as I said, you can bridge uh, and jump a Black Ops battleship or a Blops fleet to the industrial sinos. So you could just have an autopilot, what looked like an autopilot in uh, industrial going around with a sino attached and 50 bombers on the other end of it. And we had some good fun. Uh, we staged one fleet out of the Dixie and got more kills in the Dixie uh, than we did in Losec, which was quite entertaining. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really don't know how that happened, but uh, yeah, it did. Um, it was always good fun. Um, but I did a lot of support with Temple Winner when I was learning how to do bombing bombers. Um, that was sort of where I learned initially, which was with Templeman back in 2014, 2015. Um, and some of those tricks I still use and I still teach people because I do get asked every now and then, how do you bomb? How do you do this? Uh, Cause some people don't quite understand the mechanics, which is, yeah. awesome. I, I, in, I enjoy collecting information and fits and things like that. Like my pipe has got several thousand fits saved because I'll just see a fit that I like, keep it and modify it. So yeah, information I think is key in EVE, um, like knowing what people can do, what people can't do, um, and knowing how the mechanics work so you can use them to your advantage is ideal. I, th I think there's, there's something else. Yeah, yeah. There's something else that you that you mentioned, which is like people often have a lot of questions about bombing. Um, it's something we, we had a chat with a, a, a couple of the um, FCs and leadership of, uh, oh, of Bombers Bar not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, a couple lo really lovely couple of guys. And and I actually I, I had a similar question to there because um, it's always there's a there's a, a pre built risk that comes with running blobs. Whereas if you get one guy that doesn't know what he's doing, and just something as simple as warping to the to the blobs uncloaked. Or just uncloaking at the wrong time or you know yeah, really sure. there are so many ways that it can go There's wrong. lots of ways it can get, can go wrong yeah um yeah it's often a case if you're running a fleet with people that you don't know you often ask before you even undock right who's not done this before or who's not confident so you can at least pass on some information prior to them undocking and potentially messing things up um for bombing bombers bit that's tricky is the setup uh for fleet flights now because everything it used to be for fleet flights um or for soft timings of that you were fighting over a station or a tcu or things like that where it was a, you had to be at a structure so you could know that a fight was coming and make all your pings beforehand now with the way that the command nodes uh spawn you've got to do it dynamically so you've got to do it on the fly um, so remember when we were with uh, United Federation of Conifers, we were trying to defend, I think it was an Astra house or Severin, Athedon, yeah. um in the home system. Um, and we had, I said, right, I'll go do a bomber wing. Um, and I was making, as I was getting the fleet set up in positions, I was making the pings on the fly. And due to the grid, I couldn't use two of the pings, which meant that I couldn't get the three waves of bombs coming in how I wanted to. So I had to go and modify them slightly. So I decided let's put in some void bombs, like the standard void bomb, uh, which mm. just nukes a bit of capacitor out and add them into the mix. Um, and yeah, so I went from having three waves of damage bombs to two waves of damage bombs, plus a load of void bombs, which helped, but we didn't have the critical mass of damage bombs to try and kill an AB nightmare fleet, which is hard enough to bomb as it is. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's a lot of setup and it's a lot of knowing how you can make the setup beforehand. Like having a interdiction nullified T3C to make your pings is incredibly useful. Because um, on the recent, um, I think it was an iHub fight in Quirius. Mm. No, in Dell actually. Um, it's one of the ones that Goons lost recently. Um, we were as part of CAPF, we had, I think it was a 15 or 20 man bomber fleet. So two, two to three waves worth of bombers. Um, and we had a number of bombing setups. Like we have, we've got pings everywhere because everyone has pings on all the gates. It was then using the uh, 
Tengu that I had to make pings on the command node itself so we could vector bomb on the command nodes or at least have two waves come in from the same direction and then have a guaranteed out ping that was in line. So there's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of setup and it, it does work and it does take time and you've got to think about things not on like a 2D plane but on like in 3D sometimes, which can get a bit confusing. Yeah, that there's a lot of geometry and maths involved and there's an awful lot of kind of time and effort or a, and, yeah. a really short period of like shit actually happening. You know, it's yeah. like kind of you can you can be hours setting up for what is essentially like five seconds uncloaked launching a bomb and getting off grid. Yeah, or you can do like the, the couple of hours worth of setup of getting all your pings and then the fleet come in through a different gate and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. right. we were told they were coming in this way or we'd like been told that yeah they're likely going to travel this route because that's the route they always traveled and then instead they came in a different way via titan bridge so yeah i've known uh, there's a bomber fleet a couple of weeks ago um where we tried to wipe a ferox fleet um we baited them into warping uh to a gate uh, that we just like we had the friendly fleet warp to the gate as soon as the friendly fleet entered warp the dicta bubble went up so as soon as goons tried to warp to the gate they'd have landed on the edge of the dicta bubble we had the pings set up um it's just there was a friendly scepter in the wrong place at the wrong time and decloaked the bomber wing uh Ugh. so yeah that was that plan out the window and that's all it takes yeah yes yeah, it's, just... it's just someone in like the right place wrong time yeah. But so I do enjoy the setup for bomber fleets because some of the mechanics you could use, um, which I tried once on Sissy and then they changed the way bombs worked. So I couldn't, like, you can, do you know, pipe bombing? Um, yes. You used to be able to do that with bombers because you used to be able to launch a bomb. If you bridged into a system and then didn't move but click the bomb launcher to launch a bomb, the bomb would sit still. So you could jump, like, rather than sending in, like, a couple of hundred mil battleships in to go and bomb a fleet, you could just send eight bombers in and just wipe a fleet. But it would have to be tick bomb, right? Like, you still have to tick bomb it? No, you could it. do it as a, as a standard, yeah, you could just do it as a standard bomber fleet. You could have them on a bubble, and then as they're going through, you light this covert sign inside the bubble, where they're going to burn through you, you then drop all the bombers. Normally, as they were landing, um like as they were decelerating out of warp you'd have everyone jump in and press the bomb and then just boat out right so it could work um but the other one was the double bubble uh to try and stop people like using mechanics for um the way you can manipulate or not manipulate grids as such but you can have the two bubbles interact uh with each other uh, at the edge of a like warp grid where you have a small bubble set up just inside the 500 oh, kilometer right, yeah. like yeah. range, yeah. and then you have a large outside, which will then stop them from, they'll get stopped by the small, but then the large one stops them from actually being able to get away. Yeah. Which I think yeah. I acquired, well, or learned that from uh, John Dries, uh from Hon Honorable Third Party and some of his YouTube videos. So yeah, information and like just finding out people that have done things before and learning how they do it is a, a good way of getting some good kills. It's a lovely system, that one. Um, for, for, for anyone, I don't know if there's anyone listening that doesn't really fully understand it, but the idea being that uh, a bubble will only affect your ship if it was within 500 kilometers of the object that you're warping to. So if you set that bubble up in line between two gates, you have your small bubble at 498 kilometers from the gate, so that will still interact with people. And then you have your large bubble 502 kilometers from the gate. And what it means is the large bubble doesn't interfere with their warp. So the small bubble stops the warp, but the large bubble is essentially completely surrounding them when they land on, on that grid. So it's very, very awkward to get out of. But yes, anyway, sorry. Uh, do do continue, Nate. Um, I just I, I feel like so many of these. 
So, what do you... so, so many of these stories require like a, a really a solid bit of understanding, yeah, of, of exactly how bombing works. And I would, I would strongly recommend if anyone's not fully following along with this, like get in on Bombs Bar, like Nate did, and learn all of this stuff because it is, uh, it's some really entertaining mechanics to deal with. How do you yeah. feel about um, the most recent uh, blast changes? I like the fuel change. Um because I can now bridge a ridiculous T3C fleet off one drop's worth of fuel, rather than having to bridge some, refuel, bridge the rest, because uh, the fuel base got doubled in size. Yeah. And that's just made life a lot easier, but a lot more expensive to refuel. For individual uh, blobs, sort of ups and downs. for the individual blob ship itself, uh, where do you think the balance now lies? Like, where do you think the best combat blobs is? combat wise um i think for solo it's still um toss up between the panther and the sin um just for the amount of mids that you've got for shield uh because most solo blocks i want to say will run like the shield block setup which uh if you ever want an example of mazel uh is yeah like the pinnacle of the blocks fit in, in my opinion um you don't need to officer everything but like the the fits that you use just down tier them a little bit and they're ideal um for fleets i'd argue that armor fleets are better um and from that you've got the redeemer um with lasers and scorch is ridiculous on that um and you can fit some decent newton power on it than the panther um if you've got capless guns which means you can just newt for longer and harder um and if you want you can drop one of the guns for an extra newt which just gives you a comparable newton power to a sin um the sin itself is pretty good but i wouldn't say it's as useful on fleets as such um because it's relying on drones which have an inherent travel time um and more often than not like the massive high slot rack of newts that you could have um you can achieve similar newting power with redeemers and uh panthers so yeah for solo i'd go panther and sin um and then fleets i'd go panther um and then redeemer and sin sort of evenly split as like joint second okay so yeah, i noticed that you haven't said the word widow at all in there so i'm just going to take everything yeah. so, <laughs> throw it right out the window in like a niche um, point because yeah niche, like, there's, you've got to use niche fits for it because if you're in an armor fleet with your full rack of ecm your tank is pretty pants mm. i just realized it's a plane taking off in the background ah, it's, oh, don't worry yeah the, the plane who's, taking who's off in the background. because he yeah no, trained no, it's, a widow. it's it's uh yeah okay. um so like the widow's good for doing dd sites because you can fly right. out like a rattlesnake pretty much um the marshal sort of taken over from that because the marshal does everything the widow does but better but also for like a massive price increase nate has so devoted lots of people nate has demoted my blop ship of choice down to a pve ship i cannot believe <laughs> what i'm hearing right now but yeah i initially trained into the widow um and thought yeah this one it just looks the best well, i'll give it that looks wise it's arguably the best in my opinion but for actual use wise um not ideal unless you're part of a big group um i'd probably fit it mjd crews um and then max damage lows and basically land on grids mjd off um having first double clicked in a direction because otherwise you end up 100 kilometers closer to the sun um and yeah and then just hit things with crews from range like you're not going to apply that well because of cruise application but you can fit the low slot ballistic controls that help with application and fit a couple of painters or guidance computers and just try and make stuff apply yeah or you can man tank and go polarized uh torps and just no, face hug I, something and try and kill it in the reality i just have this bad habit of training all the wrong ships and all the wrong characters and uh yeah. you could argue that i'm just bad at this game but i prefer to think that i'm just unlucky um well you're after the it's like going the scenic like when you say you're lost you're not lost you're just taking the scenic route you're yeah just taking the scenic just route like the, the long way around choice. i'm learning things the hard way it's working out just fantastic you know 
yeah, you're working out what's bad to then work out what's good. <laughs> How could you know? You know, like you have no other way yeah. to know. You don't know till you try. Right, unless you ask people that know well, better. Like Siegfried's fitting lounge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like Siegfried's fitting lounge. So yeah. no, I do like the new blocks changes. Um, I need to move my blocks into uh, current staging to start using them a bit more. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, what are you doing like blocks wise now? Like... Uh, most of what I'm doing is cloaky T3Cs. Um, there's a group called Honey Hunters, which are like providing harassment to goons. They just sort of kill everything they can and they operate out of goon staging 1DQ. So they will camp in 1DQ and kill stuff going in and out on various gates. Um, and yeah, try and not get caught in the process. So I've been using a uh, Loki um, and the group or Cap F have been doing a fair bit. And yeah, we have a lot of fun. Nice. And how effective has that been? Do you, do you feel like you're, you're making uh, an impact? Don't know about as impact as such, um, but we're having fun. That's the main bit. We're having fun. Um, we, I think yesterday we got a hundred and something kills. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, in two systems, including the guy. So we got reported an in Intel, um, as a load of cloaky T3Cs set up in a system. This guy decides to wrapped in his rattlesnake in a hub the one jump out with a cloak with a neutral tune in system hmm. that's got like cloaky kills on his kill board crazy so of course yeah we then get a rather nice rattle kill that's it's it's nuts what some people will do but i, I mean yeah. i don't know i guess you just put it down to not watching intel but god damn yeah um but the counter plays from goons have been pretty good um they've been using uh bait to come in to go and combat scan our positions um and then warp in an interceptor fleet on top onto those positions to try and decloak us nice or they'll have sort of bait ship come in um like they had yesterday it was a bait proteus with a long point um so they'll wait for us to engage the bait proteus then they'll point whatever's closest um and then bring in a box fleet on top of us to then try and kill that and everything else so like the counterplay and the plays and counterplays and us baiting their bait and like taking the bait but not taking the bait at the same time, like staying away from like the cloaky Proteus, um, mm. being actually quite engaged and trying to work things out. Hmm. That does sound interesting. But yeah, it's quite, it's entertaining. It's like a big game of cat and mouse, but sometimes you're the cat, sometimes you're the mouse and it keeps flip-flopping. Yeah. Well, uh... I'm not sure we have much else to talk about. Pardon? Well, uh, yeah, we do. Quite good. Oh, do we? Yeah, we do. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do. We so, we so do. We so do. Yeah. This happens yeah. Nate, all the time. Yeah. You've got you've got some big kills in the past. Uh -huh. Give us give us some of the, the the highlights. I know there was one that you talked about before we started the show. Thera, I think was it. Yeah, the Theron uh, carrier that got me blacklisted from tests. Everything. Yeah. Uh, right. From well, these rock groups. There, that was quite a good one. But there are others. Uh, yeah, there's a couple more. Uh, let me see if I can ping some of them out. Ah, the best one. Uh, I decided to fit a Gnosis up with everything. So one of everything on it. Um, oh, yeah. I'll, see if I can, I'll see if I can link you the, like the Piper thing for it. But it had, uh, like a newt. It had a smart bomb. It had a pulse laser. It had an auto cannon. It had a missile launcher. It had a scram web. It was shield, armor, and hull tank. It was like using all the bonuses that the Gnosis has, but one of everything. Um, yes. And I managed to get a kill with it. Yeah. To the point where <laughs> the guy, the guy that I killed, was struggling that much. He walked in his Falcon ult to try and jam me out, and failed. On the first, he failed, <laughs> failed to jam me. So I kill, kill. I think it was a Cinnable I killed. So he was roaming around in a Cinnable with a Falcon ult, um, because that was the era pre ECM changes, and. Uh, yeah, I then went for tackle on the Falcon, and he luckily was aligned out and got a jam off. Uh, so I lost uh, tackle on this Falcon. Otherwise, I would have had a Falcon and a Cinnable kill. Oh. In a Gnosis that was absolutely ridiculous. It should not have worked, <laughs> but it does. <laughs> the surprise package Gnosis. Yeah, it's. It, I think it was called Overload All the Things, because I ended up overloading everything to kill this Cinnable, because uh, I thought, why not? Uh, also, just. Real quick, because 
this kind of applies to all of us in a way, but um, have you had a read through the the dynamic bounty system dev blog that came out pretty recently? Yeah, I've had a quick read through it. Uh, what, it do you, what do you reckon to this? Because, like, I don't know a... how well it'll be implemented. Uh, I can see yeah. it's a good idea to try and spread people out, uh, which is sort of what part of the ADM system was meant to do, was you want to spread everyone out so that you could secure your space better by having higher ADMs. So just, 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 just overview out. it. Just overview um, it. What they're going to do is, like, as, as, and this is as I understand it, is if you're in a, a very active system, so if there's lots of people doing stuff in that space, and what it's going to do is is reduce the bounty output that you're getting for killing stuff in there to below 100 percent or whatever it's going to be um and as i understand that, that it can go the other way as well so you can get more money for ratting in somewhere that's like got nobody in it like if you're ratting yeah, so in it's completely tied to, uh, i think the positive uh percentages were tied to pvp activity okay so what, if you're ratting uh, in a system where there's been a lot of PvP kills, then you're actually going to get more money for it. Yeah, so part of the dev blog, like the three bullet points they've got is excessive ratting, the multiplier goes down. High level of player combat and death, the multiplier goes up. And if it's an empty system, the multiplier stabilizes at an equilibrium value, which I'm going to take the big guess and assume is the 100%. Yeah. Um, from people having, um, from reading Reddit, people having done uh, like the hobo leaks. Uh, I think yeah. they said it went down to 30%. So you'd only get 30% of a rat's uh, bounty value up to, I think it was 120%. Okay. So it's quite a large amount. Um, and then the, I'd seen that someone had done some testing on Sissy and worked out that to go from 100% to 85%, uh, they said they killed 177 rats, which is only a couple of sites worth of Yeah, it's not much, is it? not much it's, it's gonna i mean if it stays like this when implemented it, it'll i mean it'll have a significant effect and did i think i guess the idea behind this yeah go on do they specify what the minimum percentage will be uh just only keep going down? the guy the guy who did the who ran hobo leaks uh there's a reddit thread about it um and he said that the minimum value went to 30 percent so it'll wow. go and yeah. as low as 30 percent it, it doesn't say anything in the dev blog. It doesn't specify about the numbers. It doesn't but specify I mean, any numbers. Yeah. That's just them doing the sissy data mining that Hobo yeah. does. Which I guess we'll see what that is, is when it's fairly it gets. accurate generally. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I mean we'll see we'll see what it is when it actually kind of like hits live servers. If it I don't think it's hit yet, has it? No, it's no, it's uh, yeah, not uh, yet. Uh, okay, the release was. Uh, they're also tying into it. Um, I think the ESS changes. Yeah, uh, which apparently is going to from what I've been reading on Reddit was you can't activate an MWD within like a 75 kilometer sphere or something. So it's just going to be like, if you want to raid one of these AB Phantasm or AB Succubus and just zoom around with next to zero sig and uh, collect the loot and run off. But I've not seen any dev blogs relating to that yet. Uh, that was just people doing testing on Sissy with the new features. Yeah, uh, next week apparently, according to the the dev blog on the the kind of the dynamic bounty system, is next week is we're gonna when we're gonna hear more about the the ESSs. But um, like I think all in all, certainly from the perspective of someone like you, Nate, who enjoys kind of you know the the, the hunting side of the game, yeah, then this seems like a really good change. Like I'm yeah, I'm struggling cause... to see where the where, where the bad side to this is, and I'm sure there will be one because inevitably there always is somehow. You know, all, like I'd see it like the only bad side I can see is if I wanted to crab to make money, um, to like do writing sites to make money. Um, I could see it as a bad thing, but from a hunting perspective, it's quite good. Um, and I think they said they were going to tie the whatever the current multiplier is, tie that into the agency, um, which potentially will have an ESI endpoint, which means .lan potentially will show you ah. what the multiplier is. So if you're in a high multiplier, you see a high multiplier system, head there, chances are there'll be a ratter. Or if there's a really low one, then there's lots of writing happening there, so you potentially find something. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's almost true. like a more accurate NPC Delta and so it's, like, yeah, it's like Delta, the NPC yeah. kills and the NPC kills Delta. Um, so it's sort of aggregating the two of them together. 
which are useful for hunting. Um, and it uh, going on full tinfoil hat theory potentially highlight places where there's lots of botting because if you've got a system where a gear is running 23 hours of the day, then the multiplier will be through the floor. Yeah, it's going to absolutely tank the multiplier. Of running. So, yeah, so potentially, I think like it could be a way of them trying to reduce botting income, but that's pure tinfoil theory at the moment. No, I mean, I think that's, I think that's got to be part of it. Like, a system like this really punishes players who just sit in one system and rat 24 7. And that is, I mean, there are some people that do that because they actually enjoy that style of gameplay. It's not for me, but fair enough if you do. No, I, but, I used to do that yeah. when I was in Brave just while I was working on like uni coursework or something. I'd have it in the background, I'd have the have many clients up, just have them right, and I'd have an eye on Intel. And then if anything came in, I'd walk to a bookmark on the Fortizar and just sit there. As soon as things yeah. cleared, um, cleared up, I then send them back off. It was just a passive, like semi AFK isk making activity while I was doing uni coursework, doing some weird and wonderful maths that I normally got wrong. Yeah, and I like, I, I mean, in a way, it's kind of I, I like that they're doing this because it means you're going to have to have, if you want to make decent money, ratting. You're going to have to be more active and more involved. You're going to want to move your stuff around. You're going to have to then interact with this ESS. So there's lots of opportunities for a hunter to, to get in there and kill you. And there's also yeah. opportunities if you are that ratter or if you go further away and you're making 120, 130% um, of what you normally make, then, yeah, you know, then it's a big bonus everything. to you. Yeah. Um, um, I'd see it as I would probably fit up bait and try and catch the hunters that's how i would consume myself playing this uh if i wanted to which is set up like have a sino and system have a ratter um bait tank it and fit tackle and some newts on it um yeah and then just see what tries to kill me and then try and kill that um if it turns out to be like uh, some high-end groups then i probably won't counter drop them but yeah maybe don't pull the um, trigger there yeah <laughs> yeah it'd be a case of like right okay yeah that's a however many mil merman and down the drain oh well get the next one out of the hangar and keep going but yeah, yeah. Think there's, there's lots of potential for plays and counter plays everywhere which is uh quite good i mean my hope is just that it kind of combats the the, the botting really and i i, I mean i i really think it will like it's difficult to see how it wouldn't hugely impact someone who's you know gameplay is essentially like turn on turn on the computer and just get your bot ticking like constantly in one system and you just can't do that anymore you can't have your fleet of vnis or i think they've all upgraded to ishtars now since the vni yeah, now yeah 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 exactly well, i liked how the ess has been used at the moment like we know someone who uh decided hmm I think these guys might be botting. Time to profit off this, having reported them. Just anchor an ESS in their system. Um, I'd seen a video uh, ah, of Russians anchoring an ESS. Uh, <laughs> Did you remember that? I think it was default. It was, was, de oh, was default. It was default. It was, it was default. Uh, yeah. It was one of them. One of the one of the guys whose name. I think you're right. I think it was default. Um, yeah, the other one I seen was Russians would uh, find a site that had triggers in it. Um, I think it was one of the hubs had triggers in. They yeah. would warp a super to the site, drop the ESS in the center of the site, align the super out, kill all the triggers, and then warp off because they couldn't get pointed by the amount of NPCs with points or scrams. And then anyone that was trying to warp to that ESS would get destroyed by a fully spawned, uh, I think it was a Forsaken hub or Forlorn hub. Um, and yeah, there's a ridiculous <laughs> amount of NPCs. There's a ridiculous amount of elite frigates in there that have got tackle, got e war, got everything. So anyone going there would just die. So all you had to do to then share the ESS was have a pod warp because currently Rat AI, they don't engage pods and then just go and hit share. So anyone trying to steal gets killed. And then, uh, yeah, anyone that's there to share it survives. I mean, it's, it, just, it just loops it's round. Fun. It just loops around so nicely to what you were saying kind of way back at the start, which is that the more information you have in EVE, the better you're going to be at this game. Because again, like I know, um, 
I know a couple of people who just make their living off solo ratting in Null, in like, you know, the lesser traveled areas of, of space, like NPC Null and things like that. Um, and I know one of the kind of the big tricks to it is essentially kind of doing the waves in the correct order that if someone does decide to warp in on you and you get a bit of trouble, that you just pop that trigger ship. And then suddenly that grid is like a horrifically dangerous nightmare for anyone that's not properly tanked against it. And that, that'll save you quite a lot of the time. So there's that, that extra knowledge is very useful on both sides of the, uh, the kind of the equation here. Yeah. The other one is a uh, Suetonius ESS with the, uh, diamond rods. Like the, do you see the video that Suetonia did of them yeah. with the ESS? Like that's another good way of doing it. Um, but the mechanics of that is, uh, you find a system with the diamond miners in, uh, they'll then have a response fleet. You have two characters, uh, to set up. You have one, uh, that's got positive stand-ins. I think it was like plus three or plus five with whichever faction diamond rat and the other one had negative standing. So they would spawn the response fleet. You would spawn the response fleet, warp off, combat probe, the uh, diamond rats, warp there, drop the ESS. Like, because initially, like, unless you had combat probes, you couldn't find the diamond rats. As soon as you drop an ESS, it shows up in your overview. People would then go, why is there an ESS here? Let's go have a look at this and then get debated by diamond rats. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's uh, just another way of playing with mechanics to your advantage and knowing how the mechanic works to get things to uh, play to your advantage. I saw some guy in Losec one time who was doing something similar to this, uh, where he was sitting there with an industrial sino. People would work the industrial sino trying to pop it uh, and would immediately get locked by an insta-locking Mollus Navy upon land and nuked by the Death Star Post that was right next to it. Yes, uh, there was a, the, uh, they did that in Null a couple of times as well. There was always, in Horde space, there was a eight Death Star pods with a Sino and someone in local, whenever someone neutral came in would go, help me, I'm tackled at the Sino. Yeah. <laughs> so someone would like, they, they'd play on people going, oh, right, I'll go help this guy out. Um, and then they'd warp over and just get nuked by Death Star pods. And that was, that was that dude making a living right there. There was plenty of wrecks around. So. Yep. It's a good way of doing things. Um, yeah. Like we did that, we used an ESS to bait um, when you could anchor them on citadels. So when DQC was part of Phoenix Fed and we lived in Immensi, um, we had a anti-subcap Astra House and we would anchor the ESS like just underneath it. Um, you then have a pilot sat in uh, the Astra House and they'd just be sat there providing cover for whoever's writing. As soon as a neutral gang came in, walked to the Astra House, the bubble on the ESS would draw everyone into it um, and then you could launch your fires and then frag whatever you got and I think we got from Acht and Partisan we got uh, Loki, Golem, Mercurial, all bling fit uh, oh. there's kills for that hmm. uh, but yeah it's another it's a case of just yeah use things to your advantage and try and outplay people the more information you have the more chances you have of outplaying someone yeah alright to, all right, uh, all right. I'm done. I know. I know okay. we've gone too long. No, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that we were going to talk about the the uh, bounty changes, but so we did. All right. So uh, I think it's a good time to wrap up. Uh, Nate, thank you very much for being on the show. Farg, as always, thanks thank for being very much host. for having me. Yeah. And uh, I I never know what to say. Fly something, guys. This is I hate. It's, I never stealthily. know what to say. It's like fly stealthily. Like I don't. It's so weird. There you go. Nah. I could just say nothing. I should say nothing. I should be like, bye. And then wrap just it go, up. Just go, yeah. thanks, bye. And <laughs> just yeah, cut bye. It. <laughs> Keep going now, cool guy. Yeah. Just cut the recording like halfway through you saying bye as well. Just be like, all right, so uh, I guess it's a 